So my name is Luis Lopez and I enjoy doing a lot of nighttime photography. Not just nighttime, but also anything that has to do with nature. But it seems like I catch myself a lot in a lot of dark places. Uh, reason being is because nighttime photography is the most challenging photography and I love to challenge myself. And therefore, you know, anybody could take a picture when it's daylight. Now, can you take a picture with minimum light? That's the question. Uh, I've been doing photography for like six years because of my job. They, they got us some cameras like many years ago, like maybe over 10 years ago, but they was just taking pictures of kids. And then during COVID, I challenged myself to say, okay, I'm gonna give you six months to go out, do photography and figure out whether it's something you wanna pursue. And then I've dedicated uh, every time out of work into photography and I got the results that I was looking for and I have not stopped ever since. So yeah, believe it or not, six years. What drew me to photography was also an aspect of not only capturing the moment, but also the budget, right? Like if I do like a little documentary, like I have with, the, with my condo with a sea turtle, well that cost me thousands of dollars to do. Well, I can get in my car, go to New Hampshire, take this picture, and it's gonna be a fraction of the price. So I figured uh, if I could like kind of put some of my basic knowledge of videography into uh, uh, taking some pictures or captures like I call them um, and to see how would that uh, translate because I am a professional uh, video producer and that's where I spend most of my time. Developing my skill set is no secret. And the secret is sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. I have sacrificed time with friends, time with family, time with my kid. I have sacrificed maybe I, you know, birthday parties and, and things like that. Because when you're passionate about something, something has to give. You can't get good at something and have all the trimmings that life brings. So what I did is like I want I gone on it hardcore. And I think the reason why I've I've develop so strongly in six years is because the amount of time that I put in six years, maybe somebody else took them 20 years because I pretty much have like tunnel vision because the only way to know my full potential, I can't base that on other people, their money, whatever. I have to base it on my time and my effort. And that's what I'm after. I'm only after is what is my full potential? Anything else, it doesn't matter because I only compete with myself, not nobody else. The motivation, uh, it's, real, it's real simple at least from my point of view, which is how good could I get? Can I make this picture better? For example, I've added this picture here and I have a different sequence of it. And there are some things on it that I didn't like that I thought that could be changed. And, and then when I re-edit it, like a year and a half later, it's totally a different ball game. Like it looks totally different. All the nebulas and the, uh, the center and all the gases of space. And that's like really the, the, the motivation. It's like how, good could I make something from the past that I was struggling with um, make it in the present day and and it's just like they're all like my little kids in a way because I'm so attached because I spend so many hours um, into like what is it that I want to capture it was 2008 and I wasn't in, in, in a good space and I was living in Rhode Island and then I uh, decided to like move back home which is because I'm a Lowellian um, then after that I have to settle down. My mom recommended LTC. So I started coming here, volunteering um, and helping out other people. But at the same time, even though I had a degree, I wasn't like exercising like the craft because I didn't have uh, much projects to do. I had equipment, but again, you can have all the equipment in the world, but if you don't have a project to do, your camera will sit there, your light kit will sit there and just collect dust. So I came here and I did some things with uh, David Turney uh, called Ken's Cavalier of Cars was one of my first projects. And then after that, it kind of like little by little, I just kept stepping up to the point where like I was, uh, I got the spirit award because I was always help I'm always helping out people. That's one thing about me. I'm not selfish about the knowledge because we all have, knowledge and I don't know everything. So I gladly share because I'm hoping that again, somebody will share stuff that, that I don't know to make me better too. Uh, and, and then I was a volunteer of the year for doing some uh, graphics for the uh, folk festival, which is like intro graphics for the little segments that we do on, on the side during um, on the side uh, where all the artists uh, would be showcasing their skill set. Uh, so that's how I came into LTC and it's been a blessing because I think it has helped me stay away from that dark place and, that, and it has given me some purpose. And also I realized that maybe I was 
a little bit better than I thought because I think we all lack a little confidence, especially on something media because there's just so many people doing the same thing and it's just like how do you stand out so it's hard to to see other people's work and this is why i don't compare myself to nobody i just compare myself to that because when you do comparison comparison kills love and therefore if you don't compare yourself to anybody but yourself you will always be striving to be better because you can't be the next or the next you just have to be you so this piece right here i call it circles and more circles because it has semicircles in it and, and this piece was taken in New Hampshire up in um, Goham. It's, I believe it's called the Moose Brook Hotel. So what I did was like, my brother, we came back to the room. It was cloudy, but when we got there, it cleared up. So I put the camera literally on the parking, on the parking lot, looking up towards the North Star, and I just left the camera there. And I started watching The Big Lebowski, and, and then laughing woke my brother up, and he was like, oh, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm taking a picture. So this picture right here is a combination of about 250 pictures, it shows the, the, the rotation of the earth and the movement of the stars. And, um, and believe it or not, these stars are moving, could be moving at a million miles an hour. But yet it's really hard to capture if you do just one picture. So it's, it's very technical pictures, but star trails are some of my favorite and I'm definitely looking forward to doing some other dope ones. So how I prepared for some of these photos, actually it took over uh, 80 hours of preparation uh, by going through google maps looking at the uh, the itinerary that a company that i hired um, from iceland to uh, give me so they laid out all these spots and then i went in and i just took out whatever i wanted so then i have an app uh, that tells me about the northern lights and, and an app that tells me about like uh, light pollution and um and then uh and then photo pill uh, so I would like literally like be in a virtual world inside of the phone, like looking at, okay, at this, at this specific location and where the known lights might be. And like, uh, and then I would look at the, once I'm on location, I would look at the report and see what the intensity is uh, of the light. Cause these right here, like you could see it, you not, it wasn't, you can't see it as, as on the picture, but sometimes they're so bright that you could read a newspaper um, in the middle of the night. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of preparation. Now, reason being is because you want to be efficient. For example, like a trip like this is, is an expensive trip. So I wanted to make sure that I was efficient at every stop that I went and that I was able to like maximize my opportunities, not to capture a lot of pictures, but at least to walk away with one picture out of the location that's a, what I would say like a banger. Um, so preparation, preparation, preparation. Uh, you need to like do your due diligence, not just the camera. And also look at other photographers, how the photographers went on that location. What did they do? Uh, how did they do it? Uh, not because you want to be like them. It's just you want to uh, gather a little bit of the technical uh, know-how uh, to try to pull it off. Um, and as long as you prepare uh, correctly, you should not spend too much time taking the picture and I would go into this other part of taking the picture that if you technically, if you take the picture very uh, soundly, you have minimum editing to do. And that's the key right there. When I start editing a picture and it takes too long to edit, I already know I did a bad job. And therefore, like, there's no need for me to struggle with this. Uh, I just need to be a better job. I'm capturing as perfect as you can on the camera. And that makes your life easy. Here, uh, here was jam-packed with people and this is the same location it just again maximizing how many how many pictures could i take everyone is trying to just take that time lapse or whatever and i'm like okay i got one picture i got two picture and yes some places are full of photographers and some photographers have not learned etiquette so they'll come in with the car with the lights on and like and that would like mess up the exposure so a lot of people get yelled at especially when it's locations like that where everyone who's there is trying to get the same picture you're trying to get. So it gets, it could get a little bit, um, you know, uh, unfriendly. I do do a lot of editing, especially uh, when it's like a new genre that I haven't done. Not because I'm trying to manipulate it or, or anything, more because I'm trying to understand how to edit that particular picture. But again, like if you take the picture, like technically sound on the camera, like it's, re it's very minimum editing. You should be able to edit in a, in a few minutes at tops. Um, and then there's some pictures that 
I have to like put down for five or six years because I don't have the skills to edit. I think what has made my photography stick out in some people's eyes because I decided that I need to go somewhere exotic to take pictures. And I also needed to invest the money, the little bit of money that I had to do this because nobody was gonna do it for me. And the only way that I was gonna be able to showcase what this whole gallery uh, represents is by me taking a chance on myself and saying, you know, I could do this and I'm gonna go out there and do it. So if you wanna do photography or videography, remember you have to invest in yourself because nobody's gonna, be nobody's gonna believe you or, or have faith in what you do until you go out and do it and prove it, and prove it first. One of the tips that I have for up and coming photographers would be don't let not having a camera be the catalyst for you not doing it because you could take fantastic photos with a cell phone long exposure, short exposures, micro. I mean, there's so much stuff out there that you could actually get for your phone and apps too that will help you get RAWs. Um, so you don't need a big camera. What you need is your imagination and don't let the lack of equipment or equipment uh, tie your hands because creativity is creativity. It doesn't matter what you use. I have traveled to many different places. I've traveled to Mexico several times. I've traveled to Jamaica, I've traveled to Iceland. Uh, these are some of the pictures. And I also traveled just recently to Puerto Rico. Um, so I'm interested in places that also like uh, spark curiosity because I'm kind of a nerd. Um, so these are the, the places as of right now when I got to the level that I'm at where like I wanted to put some time into before I branch out to other countries. Me doing photography is not just capturing a picture. For example, like, uh, Going here was a way to see things that I normally uh, do not see. And I went there with my daughter Sloth. And it's not a real Sloth, it's a play Sloth. It's called, it's called Slothy. So all the pictures of Iceland remind me of me hanging out with a plush animal. People thought I was crazy. People were on the boats uh, when we went on the amphibian boat to see some of the close up of the iceberg. They were like, I seen that Sloth. So any picture that I see of Iceland reminds me of the sloth. The p picture that uh, we saw earlier of the uh, Milky Way over the White Mountains, uh, that reminds me of the weekend that I had with my brother, uh, which was very special because we didn't grow up together. So it's, um, it was nice to be able to bond and, and hang out. So that picture is, is, is special uh, for me. And other pictures I might've been like with my, um, with my daughter. And those are special too, because not only do I remember taking the pictures, but I remember whether we were sitting down eating afterwards, or, or how was the ride there, or the ride back. So for example, I've created a tradition with my daughter where we go out and um, every year during foliage and we try to like um, see different places, uh, whether it's Massachusetts, uh, up in the White Mountains, or last, one of the last time we went even further up to like north, uh, the Northern Woods, uh, North Woods, and that was amazing because we've never been there. So I think photography as a person who was introvert, had a lot of anxiety, antisocial, photography is the tool that has got me out into the world and, and, and has helped me with deal with that part of my life or that part of my mental health.